Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and I have to admit to something. As a person who has studied personal growth and psychology for seven years, working to improve myself, I still have one thing I have never been able to really shake, something that I've never really been able to stop. I find myself burdened by stress to an unhealthy degree and I have struggled with stress my entire life. Nine days out of ten, stress is an unnecessarily heavy burden on my shoulders. And I wanted to talk about stress today, stress management, how you can pace yourself, how you can slow yourself down, how you can make sure to make the best out of your day, to do what you're meant to do without rushing yourself and without falling victim to the necessary burden that is stress. And to imagine what stress is like and why you have stress, I want you to hold out your hands like this. Form your hands into a bowl. Then imagine yourself pouring water into this bowl. Now imagine all of, a lot of this water will start to leak out. And the thing is here, everything that leaks out represents stress. Stress is that experience of seeing things leak out. And that is... You can't control everything, and that is a stressful experience. Every time you're encountered with that feeling of not being able to control, of losing control over something, of having things drop all over you, of having things come at you to a degree that you can't contain or control it, that is stress. And um, stress management is... The ability to make sure as little as possible runs outside of your hands. To make sure that you set clear expectations on yourself. How much can I expect to hold? How much can I handle? How much can I carry? What a lot of people do when they start seeing and experiencing water leaking out of their hand. Of shores that they miss, of things that they ha don't have time for, of errors that they notice in their Word document that they don't have time to fix, of uh, overtime work to keep up. That is just experiencing more and more water pouring out of your cup. A lot of people make the mistake, they pour more water to make sure that it, they keep up with it. Okay, I'm dropping a lot of water right now, but if I pour more water, then at least I can hold on a little more. And that is how most people today handle stress. They increase the rate at which they pour water so to give themselves the experience that they are holding on to more, while in fact they're also dropping more and more. And that is better perhaps illustrated by imagining yourself juggling different balls. Every ball in means a task. The more balls you can hold on to and juggle, the better your stress management is. But how do you build stress tolerance? How do you build resilience? You know, if you ask apply for works, and I've, I've been applying for like hundreds and hundreds of jobs in the past months before I got this job at Rituals. And uh, every single advert mentions the ability to manage stress. All of them talk about the importance of being good at managing stress. But most people don't even know what that means. Does that mean being able to handle more stress? Does that mean to be able to uh, say no to tasks and to say I don't want to do it? What is it really? And what is it our employees are expecting of us? Our employers are expecting of us? Are they expecting a stress tolerant person to always take on every shore and to be able to do everything without being stressed? Or are they expecting a person that will say, I can't do that, I don't have time right now, I'm working on this right now? Are they expecting a person that can prioritize? And honestly, I don't, I'm not sure all employers themselves know this. I think a lot of employers expect the first, not the latter. So the thing is, when you're one of those people that pour more water, you will experience more and more leaks. You'll experience yourself dropping a lot of balls. And a lot of people will also notice that. A lot of people around you will be noticing that you're actually dropping a lot on your way. You're sure you seem to be doing a lot and you seem to be very productive and you seem to have a lot of things going on in your life. But 
a lot of people around you will also be noticing a lot of errors, quite a few errors, quite a few issues all the time that keep on coming up. And uh, what I noticed is a lot of people become more stressed because you pour on more. When you pour on more, other people feel they need to pour on more or other people feel they need to come behind you and pick up your slack, pick up everything you're dropping, everything you're missing out on. So stress is not just an individual thing. You increase the tempo, everyone else around you has to increase the tempo. The faster you move, the faster everyone else around you has to move. And so if you are one of those people that struggle with stress management, you're also contributing to driving increased stress around you. You're making a lot of other people feel like they can never keep up with you, that there's always too much going on, so much coming up. And you're making other people feel worse. Now, I talk about the importance of pacing yourself of uh, setting boundaries, of prioritizing, of calming yourself down. What does that mean? Well, ideally what you will be working with is uh, 50, 60 clock. You'll want to uh, imagine yourself working for 50 minutes and then having a 10 minute break. 50 minutes, 10 minute break. 50 minutes, 10 minute break. That's what you'll want to be at least doing. Ideally, you'll want to work with that pace every time. Uh, around the 45 minute work time mark, you'll want to start slowing yourself down and at 50 it's time to go. It's anything you do over that time will drive increased stress. And okay, I've been talking here about how you shouldn't increase the pace and you shouldn't take on more, but why not? If you're doing more, if you're being more productive, if you're creating more and if you're getting more things done, why shouldn't you be more stressed? Why shouldn't you use stress to your advantage to create more and to push yourself? Doesn't stress lead to growth? Well, what they found is stress can drive some growth to some extent. People talk about healthy stress. And healthy stress is an adequate challenge based on your current level and your current situation. You want to add at least some tension. If you add too much, what you have is the opposite effect. And that is you start to sure speed up short term, but you also reduce your rate of learning. You also reduce a lot of your productivity long term. And you also increase your risk of becoming sick, of becoming ill and of uh, reaching some kind of state of burnout. And at that point, you can't perform as good as you used to for a long time forward. So stress has its use, but at some point it risks tearing you out, wearing you out um, and causing significant harm. And a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people feel immortal until they're not. And the thing is, the more stress you take on, the better you are at ignoring stress. A lot of people who take on a lot of things at work, they don't even realize that they're doing it. The better you are at exceeding your own boundaries and of taking on things beyond your control, the less skilled you are at noticing how stressed you are and also how many mistakes you're making and how many balls you're dropping. What you want to be moving towards is from a quantity to quality approach. In most work situations, it's actually better to have a quality mentality at work. Focused on taking a second time to read through the email before you send it. Taking a second to read through all the documents to see if there were any errors taking some time to double check your dates, taking some time to catch up with budget issues, taking some time to look at financial problems, taking some time working with regular things around you, taking some time to clean up your house when you're working from home, taking some time to do the dishes or do regular chores to get things out of the way. That's what you ideally find yourself doing. Now, stress personalities that are poor at managing these things often struggle with a lot of these things. They struggle with uh, uh, being late or missing out or forgetting things or not planning ahead. They often find themselves living on a 20, uh, 
day-to-day mentality. Like, they only see the next day. They only see what's happening then, what's happening then. They have no time to plan. They have no time for creativity, for creative expression, for reading, for getting new information, for doing research. They're only focusing on aspects that are that they think are productive. And uh, in doing so, they might be bleeding themselves dry of new skills. They might be losing the. They might be missing out on a lot of good imp- opportunities, and they might be finding themselves feeling less comfortable, feeling less healthy, and feeling less uh, taking less time for hygiene, for uh, cleaning, for all kinds of important things. You know, a lot of, there are a lot of important things to deal with around you. You could basically say that the more <laughs> you let run through your hands, the more things that you miss and you are when you pour in, when you pour more water, the more you're going to start having negative effects in your daily life, in relationships, in connections with other people, in life satisfaction, in everything that makes life good and valuable. And the thing is, This is like the shadow, like imagine that you have a light side and you have a shadow. You have something you're aware of in yourself and you have everything you're not aware of. The more stressed you are, the more things you become unaware of, the more things you lose control over. Stress is the feeling of losing control. Stress can feel like control, but stress is only control to the extent that it gives you some kind of satisfaction or relief when you're able to get a task away from you, when you're able to complete a task. It's only the relief that I've completed one of these tasks. It's not relaxation, you know, it's not control. Control is when you feel, I've done everything I need to do, I'm on top of everything, I've had time to think, I've had time to read, I've had time to catch up with friends, to talk to my uh, uh, partner, I've had time to deal with all kinds of issues that are important to me, you know. Now I can relax, now I feel in control, now I know what's going to happen for the next week, now I have my schedule, now I know. Like, control is the opposite of stress. Stress is the opposite of control. Stress is when you feel, oh, I should have talked to my mom, I should have catched up with my friends, I should have gone out that evening to meet up with everyone, I should have cleaned my house, I should have paid my bills, I should have... uh..." It's the feeling that you have so many shoots in your head. It's the feeling that you have so much going on. And the thing is, uh, people who have a lot of stress they also reduce their long-term learning, then their memory. They might remember things in a short term, but they're keeping it in their working memory. They keep it in their head all the time. They're not using their memory. They're not using, they're not thinking long-term. They're just storing data short-term for easy use, for quick use, for immediate access. And uh, that can come back to bite you. It can come back to bite you because At some point, maybe a few months from now, you might need the same skills. But a person that is very stressed will have forgotten these skills and will have to relearn them over and over every time they take on a task. Where a person that has some stress, but only to a healthy and manageable degree, only to the degree that, yeah, they can feel control. And um, for the most part, they say, yeah, I'm in control of most things that are going on in my life. So they have time to dream, and you know, when you dream, you remember, you store memories, you process experiences, and it becomes easier. Next time it becomes gradually easier and easier and easier. And you can see this, like a lot of stress personalities, they're improving very quick in the beginning, and they look like they're having a lead. And then the person with uh, the better stress management, the person that prioritizes, starts to slowly catch up. The stress type hits the roof at some point and they can't grow and they don't know how to hit it and they don't don't know how to get past it there's a there's a saying for stress personalities that they hit the wall and that's when they reach burnout and hitting this roof can feel like hitting this wall at some point you don't improve in productivity and you keep on pouring more and more water and you keep on trying to hold on and juggle more and more balls and keep up with all the tasks but you're also adding more and more tasks and uh, you to cope with that stress of not being able to grow and of not being able to do it faster, you just increase the tempo until it becomes 
too, too unhealthy and the body shuts down and says, no, stop. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not gonna do this anymore. So what you're learning is, yeah, I have to pace myself. You need to stop rushing yourself. You need to come from a perspective of self-love. You need to come from a perspective of what you enjoy. What you need to come from perspective of what motivates you and you need to be mindful and you need to think about which life as you're experiencing it you need to think about what you're doing as you're doing it you need to do things at a speed at a pace where you have time to smell the flowers to enjoy what you're doing and to take time slowly to build yourself up you'll need to work with yourself as a flower you need to water yourself you need to give yourself the right feedback for what you do you need to give yourself things that will give you a feeling of control and you'll need to give yourself time to process to dream to be creative to think ahead to plan and you need to really work with stress because when you're stressed you're not yourself when you're stressed and you're listening to another person talking you're not enjoying what they're saying you're not enjoying the conversation you're not thinking about what it means to you and how it relates to your experiences you're thinking of what to say next you're thinking of what you need to do you're never present anywhere you're always somewhere else you're always rushing yourself and so you think you're living life as if you're only going to be 30 years old. I think a lot of people do that. They live as if they're only going to be 30 years old or they're only going to live for another day. Uh, I guess when you're stressed, that's what you think. You're only going to live until tomorrow. You're only going to live until tomorrow. There's only tomorrow. There's only tomorrow. You don't see the future. So you don't think you have a future. And so you don't think you have to recharge. And so you don't think you have to relax. And so you don't think you have to take it easy. And so you don't think that you have to plan ahead. I would like you all to take a second now to leave a comment down below this video. Share your experiences with stress. What made you less stressed? What made you better at managing stress? What made you actually finally start to pace yourself? And how did your life improve once you started to pace yourself more? Once you started to stress out yourself less? Once you started to live life more? Once you became more mindful? Share your experiences and if you relate to this video and if you feel other people should think about this and watch this, feel free to share it with other people. And always if you want and if you like my videos, subscribe to get all kinds of content related to personal growth, psychology and personal development. Thank you all for being here and I hope to see you all in the next video.